Hello friends and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now I'm standing outside of my brand new hub that I just built over the weekend and I really like how this design turned out. Um, I've been seeing some neat generated AI designs that people have been uh, posting on Reddit, typing into some of these uh, new image generation AI tools. What would satisfactory look like if a computer is basically designed it? And so I saw some neat uh, design inspiration there that I wanted to uh, implement in this build. So this in a nutshell, is what I've done. So of course, because the show is called Enterprise Architecture, I thought we'd talk today about how I go about building some of these sorts of designs and the different uh, elements that go into it. And then I figured in the next episode, we could talk about principles of design and what makes a good design stand out. So today we're gonna mainly talking about the techniques to get this sort of a result. Of course, you can see inside here, uh, my actual hub is still intact uh, inside of this building. Um, and then of course, uh, outside, it looks nothing like a hub. Um, for those of you who are noticing, I'm moving very, very fast and able to fly. I do have cheats turned on for this episode, just so I can show you uh, designs a little bit easier. So first, I want to talk through the three main ways that I go about building my designs um, and the tools that I'm using to do that. I'm generally using one of three approaches, and I usually combine them in any of my buildings that I'm creating. And the first one is, of course, just using standard vanilla satisfactory techniques. Um, now, Satisfactory gives you a decent number of options out of the box for things you can build. Um, Y'all are already familiar with all this. You've got probably all of these unlocked already, all of these different types of ramps. Um, you know, we have a few architectural pieces they've given us. Um, but on the whole, Satisfactory is kind of designed uh, with big scale in mind. All of the design elements and blocks they give you for the most part are really large. Eight by four meters is the standard size of everything. Um, and that means it's going to lend towards brutalism in its architecture style. Um, here you can see this building that I put together, uh, kind of inspired by uh, Flexo's designs. Um, I talked about it a little bit in the last episode, um, but really it's just using foundations as walls is kind of the uh, trick to this technique, which you, know, you can do instead of using standard satisfactory walls. Um, so everything here is actually uh, a full uh, eight meters away from the actual inside of the building rather than being like bumped up right against the walls like you'd see in some of these older factories that I built over here. I'm also offsetting uh, the foundations here uh, by about a uh, quarter of a grid um, so that I get this inset and then I painted these uh, black. So you can kind of use that as contrast elements uh, for what you are building. And then of course, last but not least, um, using these uh, signs uh, as lighting is the other uh, piece of this technique. Um, so yeah, you can get a lot done with basic satisfactory existing elements. Um, I also like to use, well, my favorite piece to use are these um, quarter pipes. I use these for pretty much everything in my older designs. Um, again, I think they just look really, really nice. Um, and you can combine them in interesting ways um, to make, you know, nice, neat columns. Um, you can see over there, I've got some archways that I designed for the walls of this factory um, using the quarter pipes. And I think you can do a lot of really neat stuff with them. Now, you probably already know this, but I'm gonna explain this trick just for anybody who is not familiar with it really briefly. Um, the way that you in Satisfactory by default can get offset pieces uh, like you see on these where the um, quarter pipes are actually inside of each other or inside of um, sections. And also how you get these offsets that are just uh, a quarter block off. You basically use um, catwalk crossings. Now you can also use pillars. You can also do this with um, the uh, road barriers. But if you place down um, a catwalk crossing or any other catwalk piece, you can actually position um, blocks on the uh, quarters of each other. And I use this a lot for overlapping. Um, so again, just a really, really simple technique. And then you can use that over and over again to move things around. So based on that technique, you can get some interesting effects by combining ramps um, and the offsets. So like with this, I have just taken some uh, basic foundations um, and put some walls in front of it. Um, I've offset these walls by a quarter. I'm using the inverted ramp walls here and the regular ramp walls to give it this um, uh, diagonal line that goes down the middle. Um, and I think that gives you sort of an interesting way to break up the space for these um, metal walls that I've created here. 
Now, these are still uh, basic walls here that I've painted red. Um, and if you haven't seen this trick already, you basically need to place down a normal basic wall and it's gonna look interesting. I mean, this is a nice little texture that is the default walls that we were stuck with for many, many, many years uh, in the original versus house factory. Um, but now there's these one meter walls that you can place down as well. Um, and they have no real textures on them. So if you make a stack of them, it's just gonna give you a few little smooth lines um, and a fully paintable surface. So I use those a lot if I just wanna break up the space into more solid blocks. Now, unfortunately, uh, satisfactory, uh, my one complaint is that the blocks aren't really paintable aside from these walls. Um, you know, we have the uh, customizer for a while now and you, the paint gun before that, but the colors aren't as vivid as the actual paints that you're choosing. So if I'm choosing this bright red here, this is as red as it gets. Um, this is not very overwhelming to me uh, as a color, and I don't really love that. Um, honestly, uh, Satisfactory developers, if you're here listening, I really wish that there was a way to paint these things in solid colors. We really need some foundations and other blocks that you can have real, real vibrant colors on because this is um, just kind of boring um, and I don't love it. Um, but if you're using the standard colored blocks, if you just stick to whites, if you don't mind your blacks being just this charcoal gray, you can get um, a decent amount out of it. You can you can do some fun things with it. I also want to call attention to the fact that I'm adding um, a couple of little uh, street lights that are embedded into the wall here. Again, I just uh, built up to this spot um, and then stuck them down. Um, and that's giving me that bit of uh, red uh, glow on that um, for lighting effects. And that's something that we'll come back to in the uh, next episode when we're talking about architecture design techniques. I just want to call it out here. So the key here to getting interesting builds with Satisfactory is to really use the materials you've got and combine them in interesting ways. Now, um, by just combining these um, two high foundations with one high foundations, one meter and two meter, you can get this interesting um, contrast here just for the stock uh, foundations that uh, are the original ones you unlock. Um, if you then add in uh, concrete and these like corner sections, these round corners that I really love, um, you can start breaking that up a little bit more. So this is all uh, using the concrete. Um, and then of course, if you put them together, you can get even more interesting designs here. So like um, breaking up the concrete with the standard uh, Fix-It factory floor um, gives you a very interesting looking contrast. And here's an example of a column using exactly that idea. Um, you know, using the outer corner two uh, meter high and the four meter high on concrete. And then I've just slapped on these metal beams on the outside to give it a little more texture. So, you know, with this, you can actually make something that looks vaguely interesting. Um, and again, this is something that I might go through and like um, paint the sections of it um, to give it a little bit more uh, contrast or make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so we all know that Satisfactory recently added the Blueprint Designer, which allows you to create structures and save them for future use, um, and then reuse them and build them uh, with one click. Um, this is a nice addition. There have been a few mods around that add similar functionality. If you watched my last video, you probably know about Area Actions. Um, as well as micromanage, both of which will allow you to do something relatively similar. And how I built like this ramp all the way down here was with area actions, copying and pasting. Um, so Blueprint Designer allows you to do that. Now, it does have some significant limitations, mainly the size being the big one, but I like to use it for things that I know I'm going to want to repeat over and over again, um, and specifically things that I find obnoxious to build. So like for this building, um, this big brutalist structure, I actually built some blueprints um, that allow me to uh, do just the corners of it, which are the most painful part. Um, so let me plonk this down over here and you can take a look. Um, so because the corners here have to be um, offset on uh, three different faces, um, I actually just built a blueprint for this. So you can see that this one foundation is offset here, this one is offset by a different amount here, and this one is also offset by a different amount here, um, and that's how we get everything squared up. And also placing down all of these lights and configuring them over and over again from these signs also is very, very painful. So I built a generic corner that I could then place down and rotate. You can, of course, also uh, build off of this. Um, and that's why I kind of like doing just the corners because I can actually uh, zoop out all of the rest of it very quickly um, without too much work. Um, 
just like that. And it doesn't take me long to make this bigger, but the corners are the most painful part. So that's the part that I want to do automatically. Now, another example of a design that I wanted to save were those uh, big pillars that I was uh, using. So um, here we have an example of that pillar. Um, which I just wanted to be able to have and reuse and plonk down. So that way I could build out my entire train line wherever I wanted it. And then I could actually stick these columns down um, wherever I wanted them and need them um, around my build, just like so. And then of course I just need to fill in the parts underneath it, which again are is the relatively easy part. Um, you know, you can just zoop these down um, or if you're using smart mod, of course, you can just like fill those in however you want. Um, just like so, and that makes that really quick and easy. Now here's another example of something that you can do with just vanilla techniques. Um, again, this is another design style that I uh, borrowed, um, uh, let's just say stolen from Fluxo, um, you know, where you're using these uh, concrete pillars uh, as walls and big metal pillars. Um, and these are just painted beams on top. Um, so the way you get to this design um, is you literally just throw down a normal wall and then you can put a concrete pillar sideways on it. So if you set those down at about floor level, like so, um, you can stack a few of these like that to make a wall. And then I just do that on the other side uh, exactly the same way. Uh, I zoop out from the wall in this case here. So I have my overlapping like that. I remove the walls that were my guideposts. And now I have uh, two sides of the wall. Um, and then if you want to cover up the corners, you can just use these metal pillars. This is a nice way to, um, again, hide uh, some mistakes uh, or other things that just look a little weird or wonky. Um, and if you line it up just right, uh, you can overlap it. Um, I usually will build the pillars first, which gives me a little more fine grain control over where I place it. Um, but yeah, so then you can have these nice looking concrete walls and uh, put some corners on it. And then of course the um, painted beams uh, work just like your normal beams. There's nothing especially sophisticated about that. You can rotate them um, just with your normal mouse wheel, throw down your painted beam, and then you can paint it however you want. Um, and then of course you can just put lights on top of it. So just like that, all vanilla just to get to this uh, technique. Um, and then of course the uh, colored lighting again, same trick, copy settings, paste settings, and voila. So yeah, that's all you do to get to this. All just standard vanilla stuff that you can do without having to install any mods. Um, and again, it's a great little technique that I really love. Okay, so the second technique is to use mods um, and specifically to use um, mods that give you design elements that help you build better. Um, I love structural solutions. I talked about this uh, two videos ago. Um, as one of my all time favorite mods. And the number one thing that I love about this mod is honestly just the concrete blocks. These big uh, brutalist structure pieces, as I mentioned before. Um, and the reason why I love them so much better than the vanilla blocks is because these are actually, actually paintable. So when I make this block orange, it is orange. There is there is no question that this is orange. It is real orange, um, not the not actual orange that you get out of the box with the base game. That is pale orange. This is real, real orange. Um, so I use these all the time because I absolutely love the colors. Um, but moreover, it also gives you some more interesting pieces to play with. Um, much larger uh, blocks. You get these interesting curved walls that I love. I use these a lot. Um, it comes with uh, dome pieces. Um, let me show you this real quick. Um, so four of these will make an actual dome, like so. Um, and again, I just think it looks super, super good. It's kind of like the missing piece of the vanilla game that you really should have had. Now, in addition to all of these concrete pieces, um, it also adds in some additional things. Um, you know, we have um, all sorts of additional beams, including a glowing beam. Um, you know, it's just basically like a standard beam, but it glows colors and that is super nice. And it's also paintable um, while it's glowing. So it is a glowing emissive beam. 
So it lets you do more interesting things since you can uh, combine these in interesting ways. Um, so here's an example. This is basically that same column design, only instead of um, doing it with uh, the default factory pieces that come with Satisfactory, I've added in um, structural solutions pieces. So I've got an inverted cone, and I've got a cylinder, and I've got a dome, and curved walls. Um, so this looks more like a little bit of a tank. It also adds a lot of other things to the game. I really love that like you can have giant glass windows. This is a 16 by 16 window. Um, it's huge. Just, just look at this thing. It's, this is just a massive, massive window. It's also a very dirty window, it looks like, but it is a massive, massive window. You've got new types of doors that you can add, all sorts of things like that. These uh, like heavy metal walls, I use these a lot. Um, so yeah, things like that that really add a lot to the base game and fit in very, very nicely with the textures that you've already got. Um, highly recommend Structural Solutions. And again, you can use all the techniques that we talked about here previously with the vanilla game with these options. Now, I shouldn't have been surprised here, but the um, Blueprint Designer actually also does support um, Structural Solutions. So if you build anything in the Blueprint Designer here, you can, of course, use it to reproduce them. Um, so in this case, I've got a bunch of giant blocks from Structural Solutions that I just created a really quick pattern for and there you go we can create this and use it over and over and over again so combining um, this with vanilla works relatively seamlessly um, and is very very useful here's another example of a building i built using structural solutions i'm using those thick concrete foundations again along with the big eight by eight windows to get this effect now, for my inspiration for this, I really was thinking about the um, Geisel Library in San Diego, California, um, named for uh, Dr. Seuss, actually, whose real name uh, happens to be uh, Theodore Geisel. So um, I thought this was a really cool design to kind of uh, borrow from, as well as uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water um, here uh, on the East Coast. Um, so I kind of combined some ideas from both of those to get this sort of um, modernist effect. And again, Structural Solutions just really, really uh, leans towards the existing base game, which is very brutalist, very modernist, um, and combining those two to get this sort of a design. Okay, so the next technique I want to talk about is using Micromanage. Micromanage is another mod, it's another building mod. But the main thing that it does is just enhance how you can move things around a little bit compared to vanilla. Number one, it allows you to do very, very precise placement. Um, and let me show you what I mean. So if I just plonk down a foundation here, um, Micromanage has this little clipboard that pops up and I can then uh, control left click this block. And now I can control the placement and rotation and everything else of it. I can move it up. I can move it down. Uh, I can move it forward, back, left, right, whatever I need to do. So this allows me to get very, very small incremental control. You can also control how much the increments are. So if you look in the bottom left corner there, it says increments medium. Um, I can make that too huge, for instance, and move it around um, in huge increments, um, or I can make it tiny just a little at a time. Um, and that allows you to get really, really fine-grained control. Now, the other thing that you can do with it is then um, scale items. And this is the trick I use the most in my builds. Um, it does have some drawbacks, but I'll show you what I actually am doing first. So if I, once again, control click on this so that the um, block is highlighted, if I right click, no modifier key, um, I get this huge toolbar that pops up. Um, and up here in this top right corner is the grow shrink function. Now it's best seen if I set it to huge before I do this. If I scroll down, the block shrinks. If I scroll up, it gets much, much, much bigger. Um, and that can be an interesting design element to add. You can also control um, in which directions it is growing and shrinking. So if I lock these two, um, now when it grows and shrinks, it's getting wider and flatter, right? It's only growing in uh, the front to back direction. Um, if I instead uh, unlock it uh, top to bottom, it'll only grow up and down and that makes it get much steeper or less steeper. Now it's basically gone from a four meter ramp to a one meter ramp. Um, so you can lock it in that direction. Um, or of course you can uh, do it in the last direction so that it gets wider, which is also a neat technique. Um, so the end result when you do that is that the textures will get stretched, but that can look pretty good. 
at a distance um, and can be a useful thing um, to play with to get more design elements out of something. So basically I've made a three wide uh, ramp there that I could use as a roof or any number of other things. In a previous episode, you also probably saw when I was playing with these chamfers, um, getting them to uh, rotate around and scale. Um, that's how I got this design, as well as one of my favorite tricks, these automated gates. I like to uh, rotate them on their side. So a normal automated gate, as you all probably are familiar with, looks like this, closes left to right. Um, but if you rotate it 90 degrees using micromanage, it goes up and down like a normal gate. Um, and I think that's really cool. Um, here's one last trick. Um, this is just a hypertube wall hole that I have scaled up massively and it turns into this irising window. Um, now, one thing you're going to note uh, very quickly is that a lot of the models in Satisfactory, although they appear to be hollow, are not actually. Um, I can't pass through this. Um, so jumping, it's just not going to let me through because this is actually a solid model, even though it looks like there is a hole in the middle. Um, I guess they just never figure, figured that anybody would actually try to go through a giant one of these. So yeah, this is um, uh, nice for a window, uh, but not practical for a door, um, which does leave me a little bit disappointed. It would be nice to have uh, irising doors like that. Um, but again, just as something that you can do and it fits nicely inside these uh, quarter pipes as well. Micromanage has one other uh, additional uh, element that I really, really, really love and I use a lot. And that is, it, they recently added a copy and paste functionality. There I've put a connector down and I've put a square sign on top of it. Now, let's say I wanted a whole bunch of those. Let's say I wanted to use the same design pattern across um, many, many elements. Now, what Micromanage will let you do is um, I can go ahead and do my control clicking again on the things I wanna copy. And then I need a reference point. So um, if I control shift click, I get a brighter green, you can kind of tell, on the wall behind it. So that's my reference point for these items. Now, if I control shift and right click on this wall, you'll see it turns red. Now, when I right click here, um, I can use this copy selection from anchor to target. And when I click that, it's gonna give me a warning, it might crash my game. Um, it's gone and copied the exact same um, other blocks, including the block I had selected um, and replaced it with these new versions. Again, just need to configure these real quick so that they show up um, and voila. So you could do this over and over and over again. So another thing that I love about this is that I can use a similar technique to um, get everything to the same size and scale. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to uh, take these um, blocks here and make them into, let's say square um, connectors for some reason, even though it's actually a double rectangular connector, um, and I want to make all of them look the same, I can actually shift right click on this one so I get the red, um, make this one green, shift left click, you can't really tell that that's green, but that is green, um, and then I click this button here, set selection to target scale, and you'll see that just shrinks it down so it matches my original source that I had uh, chosen. So yeah, that's a quick way to get a very similar look across a bunch of different pieces that you want to use. Now, there are a couple of super major drawbacks that I want to mention. The good news is, if you rotate things in micromanage, um, generally speaking, they're just vanilla objects that you're moving around into a new orientation. So for the most part, those things are going to behave even if you uninstall micromanage or if micromanage is no longer supported, whatever happens there, um, generally speaking, you're still gonna be okay because even though blocks are rotated and moved into awkward positions, um, that's still just the vanilla game under the hood. That's different than say structural solutions. If all of a sudden this mod isn't supported for whatever reason in the future, then all of these blocks just disappear from your game and leave you with big empty holes all over your map. Um, I've never had a problem with that with structural solutions. Generally speaking, it stays up to date um, all the way since I've been using it for, I don't know, a year or more now. Um, so that hasn't really been a problem, but it's just something to be aware of. However, the big drawback with micromanage is that the scale of objects aren't necessarily um, built into uh, the base game. So in this structure I built here, I'm actually using Structural Solutions I-beam curves, and you see it says 24 meters. This is not 24 meters, this is eight meters. I have shrunk it down considerably. Um, I then moved it into the Blueprint Designer and unfortunately, well, let me show you what you get. Um, I have right here the tank that I've built. Now, you'll note something um, isn't quite right here. The blueprint designer is wholly ignorant of um, changes in scale. It'll remember the rotation, all of that's fine, but these I-beams that are super tiny over there that I shrunk down are now 
full-size massive eye beams and this is not the design that i was going for uh in any regard this is uh a little bit off and you can see all the other little bits like the dome at the top that i shrunk down this is also now um weirdly shaped um so yeah um, something to be aware of, micromanage, if you're using scale a lot, you cannot use it with your blueprint designer. Those things are fundamentally incompatible. You can't use them together if you're going to be scaling. But feel free to use it for anything that you want to rotate and move around. It'll be fine with rotation. Now, the other big problem that I have with um, micromanage, this bug that uh, exists, is um, what I can best call ghosting. Um, yes, this this is a thing that can ghost you. Some of these blocks I created using micromanage, using the copy and paste, like these chamfer tops. If I try to do things with them, sometimes it won't let me. Um, so some of them I can't actually select with the middle button, for instance, like that one. Click in, click in, it's not selecting. You're not getting that bloop. The other side effect is sometimes it'll create ghost copies. Um, so for instance, on these uh, windows that I've got here, um, hidden underneath, um, when I first built this out, it had two copies of each of the windows um, in random positions. Um, and I had to delete those and start over and do it manually and nudge them into place using the copy and paste. They're not really real windows. I don't know if it's something with the metadata underneath the um, hood of the mod. I'm not exactly sure what's causing that, but it's a pretty big bug that means that not everything is a real copy. I still use copying a lot for fine finesse work, like these lights and whatnot that I have down here, these super tiny ones that I have shrunk down. Um, these are 0.5 um, meter lights that I've made even tinier into button size. Um, so I'll use it for my finesse work when I need to make copies of a lot of things that are similar. But generally speaking, for bulk building, I'm going to stick to Smart Mod from here on, just um, because the copying and pasting, unless it's really, really um, well thought out, can cause all sorts of weird glitches and bugs. So I do use it, but just, you know, keep in mind that it can do unexpected things from time to time, and you need to keep an eye on it. Okay, so with all of those techniques in mind, let's take a look at what we can do with them. So this base, as I was mentioning before, this little hub wrapper that I have built is using a combination of those three techniques exclusively. Now, the first thing you'll note is uh, I've got these chamfer tops. Now, these are the ones that I mentioned uh, before that I love so much. I use them in a lot of my designs and by default, they look like this. They're big and chunky. Now, um, using uh, the scaling here, again, um, with micromanage, um, I can grow and shrink those down like so and make them flattened. Um, and these flattened chamfers uh, is kind of the, the missing design piece I really wanted here. So I took and made a bunch of flattened chamfers and I put them here uh, for the tops of this, as well as underneath these um, bottoms are also the chamfer bottom. Um, and that kind of looks like this if it was uh, not decorated up. So that's one piece of it. The other thing I did is stretch things out considerably. So this is um, a two meter square roof that you can see is actually uh, rectangular because I've stretched it in this direction uh, to make it much longer. The uh, other items that I um, stretched, these small frame pillars, normally uh, those are only two meters tall. I've made them eight meters wide, so they perfectly line up with my uh, windows behind them as well. Um, small frame pillars are another item that are not actually um, hollow in the middle, although they appear to be. Um, if you make them big enough to be a doorway, you cannot walk through them. Uh, I tried that here. It did not work, which is why I ended up with putting them on the sides instead. So, um, and of course my uh, automated gate rotation, um, another trick that I love. The rest of these are um, using Structural Solutions uh, heavy walls, which I mentioned I really like. Um, and again, I've micromanaged those to rotate them uh, a little bit. So they're leaning out um, and it gives me that um, that inset look there that you can see. Um, now, as far as vanilla techniques go, I've used a lot of beams. Now, beams are great because they can have, uh, cover up a uh, variety of build problems. So for instance, I have a gap in the wall here. I can just uh, plunk down a beam, make it eight meters tall, um, and I can go and take that and using structural solutions, I can just scooch that over uh, about five times. Um, and there, it covers up the hole in the wall. Um, these are also basic walls that are just turned sideways. Um, really easy technique. You can just rotate them with micromanage. Um, so yeah, a lot of rotation going on to make this a, a more vertical build. 
Um, and then here, just a whole lot of layering. I've got metal beams um, layered on top here and in diagonal position. Again, this is standard building that you can do with my reinforced window behind it um, and small frame pillars in front of it. Um, and then I just painted it this, um, this slightly gr bluish gray um, to give it that sort of contrast. You can't really see it in the light so much there, but here you can see it a little better um, just for that color contrast. Um, so you can't actually get into that section because again, the chamfers are in the way, but if you used a beam instead of the chamfer bottom, you could walk around in there. And then on top, similarly, chamfers again, full size this time um, with some uh, roofs. So again, just mixing um, concrete that's been painted with the standard fix-it roofs and then some metal beams and metal walls, you get some pretty interesting looking uh, results that I think uh, turned out really, really well. So yeah, this is the sort of thing that you can do if you um, start adding those principles together um, and using all three of those techniques uh, in your designs. Um, and of course, you could do a lot with just any one of those. You could literally just do something pretty similar with vanilla uh, building and doing lots of things that are overlapping. Okay, so those are a few design techniques that you can take and use today. Either um, if you're building vanilla, um, if you're building modded, um, any of these should be things that you can use to enhance your build. Now, during this next episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the design elements that you should know to be good at architecture, to improve your architecture skills. There's only a few principles that you really need to know about um, to get you know, pretty decent and to be able to put things together in a thoughtful way that'll make your uh, designs more visually interesting. So stay tuned for next episode uh, where we talk about that. And also go back and watch the previous episodes if you have not, um, where I talk about these mods in a little bit more detail, um, and you can learn more about how we go about building some of this stuff. I'll also provide in the description links to the mods that I'm using for this particular set of builds and some of my own design inspirations uh, that I've been referencing as I've been uh, going about these new factory projects. So that about does it for this episode of Enterprise Architecture. Keep those great comments and suggestions coming. Tell me uh, what else I should be building and what else you like in my designs, um, areas that we should be improving or other things I should be looking at. I love all this great feedback, giving me new ideas that I can build on. Um, so join us back here next time where we talk more about architectural patterns and design. Bye, friends.